SoundCloud. Okay. And Julie, welcome. And Rosemary. I think that's an autopilot. I guess she's got an autopilot. Julie, are you there? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Oh, all right. I didn't know if I was on mute or not. Yeah, are we going to get to see you too? Um, in a moment. I'm okay. moving from <laughs> one room to the next. No worries. Welcome. Where Where are you calling from? I am calling from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. New Jersey. Cherry Hill. Yes. I was born at Cooper Medical Center in Camden. Oh, that's so funny. Not too far from me. Yes. And now he's a South Floridian. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice uh, to meet you. I, yeah. I remember the Cherry Hill Mall in its heyday. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> uh, and Rose, there you are. I think this is your autopilot thing, maybe, Rose. Perhaps. There you are. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am much better, thank you. My back went out uh, oh. last night and I couldn't even breathe. But I went to the doctor and they gave me some heavy duty um, muscle relaxers. So <laughs> that's the okay. kind of la la land. Well, I'm going to say, you're going to love tonight then. La 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 la. You're going to be looking. <laughs> because we're going to do something a little different tonight, something that we don't normally do in our power hours. So, uh, but where are you calling from right now, Rose? Le um, Lakeland. Lakeland, Florida. Okay. Mm -hmm. Florida, okay. And welcome, Anne. Can't hear you or see you, but welcome. And uh, we are recording everybody. This is Burgess Power Hour, and we are uh, here every third Wednesday of every month been doing this since 2013 i am burge smith lyons the founder of essence of being and the conscious leadership academy yay and all the other cool things we do um traveling around the world doing all our cool stuff so welcome 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 tonight we're going to do a little something different uh it's going to be a little more esoteric in nature because tonight is all about experiencing your inner knowing so I figure what, what better topic do we want to play with tonight than perhaps I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about intuition and inner knowing and what that might mean to you and give you perhaps some distinctions, but also get your pencils ready and paper uh, if you're driving or uh, if you're not able to write things down, that's okay. You'll get a copy of this, this recording. If you registered for the power hour, you always get the um, recording the next day. So be looking for that. Uh, and we'll be writing a couple things down. But then I want I wanted to offer you um, a meditation that I have done around experiencing your inner knowing. And we do these types of experiences um, in our play shops for Higher Vibes is one of our other millions of different play shops that we do. But it's about finding your not just finding your inner knowing and perhaps a spirit guide or two. It also might be in that if it might be finding your passion, you might be able to experience a gift and you might be able to experience maybe a different contract that you came into this lifetime with. Okay. So it's all this really esoteric stuff. So sometimes we're pretty, you know, not so woo woo, but sometimes we are. So you never know based on whatever the topic is and, you guys came in for a reason, I suppose, and uh, we're all here together. So if you're on um, medication, Rose, just kind of when we zone out, just blah, zone out and go for it and you'll get it subconsciously. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we start? I'm going to go ahead and go because it's going to be really, I don't want to miss any of this. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? So those of you who are hearing this for the first time on the recording, we missed you, but we're recording it. So here you go. And you can have this forever and ever. Amen. This meditation. So this is my gift to you because I normally don't do these on these power hours, but I felt like uh, I was following my intuition. Do you do that? Do you follow your intuition? Do you? 
Do you act on your intuition? Eh, sometimes. So this is this is about experiencing your inner knowing. Okay. So for some people, what does that mean? What's inner knowing mean? What is that? Some people might call it your higher self, uh, your intuition, your source, God, universe, great spirit, guides, inner guidance. So everybody has their own intuits, you know, as to what that is. So whatever it is for you, that's great. Um, those are all really great, uh, I guess, uh, definitions of what uh, an inner knowing might be. But one of the definitions of intuition is I want to give you this. It's the ability to understand something immediately without needing conscious reasoning. The ability to understand something immediately without needing conscious reasoning. How about that? Does that sound kind of interesting? Yeah, any kind of conscious reasoning. Basically, without engaging that left brain, the part of you, that prefrontal cortex, that all-knowing that thinks, it's that part in our brain. Uh, instead, we're using that feeling brain, the limbic system, the mammalian brain is what we call it. So trusting your intuition, which means can mean trusting yourself, couldn't it be? Yes, part of it. And trusting whatever you feel. So when you say, I'm going to into it, have you ever heard that before? Let me go into it. Okay. So what is it? You're going into what? Anybody want to share? What do you go into? No, there's no right or wrong answer, but uh, this is, yeah, Kristen. Your, um, your higher self, right? Sure, sure. So tapping into the all, right? In, yeah, the sure. intuition, you're going into that. Indeed. So it can be a lot of different things, like I said, to a lot of different people, but that sounds right to me. We Again, we can call it source or great spirit or God or universe or higher self or your gut, our inner guidance. Some people have spirit guides, you name it. It can mean all of those things. So I'm not here to tell you what it is for you. Hi, Ann. Hi. Nice to see you, honey. Um, <laughs> I was eating ice cream. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm not here to tell you what the truth is, perhaps. I'm here to tell you what's worked for me for the last 45 years in this business and in this experience that I've been working in this realm. So... I'm just going to share a lot of different things with you about this so you can explore yourself tonight, your own inner guidance, okay? Um, so I'm going to give you some distinctions about what's work, what could work or what could work differently, perhaps. So uh, so how many of you follow your intuition? Yeah? Okay. Do you talk yourself out of it sometimes? <laughs> yeah, Bob waves his hand. Yes, sometimes we talk ourselves out of it. Oh, only when, when the self-doubt comes in. Of course, self-doubt, fear, all kinds of things. So I'm going to give you some distinctions about that, okay? And the science behind intuition, it's, it's not just a mystical concept. There's actually a scientific explanation for why it exists. I didn't know this. Our brain, Well, again, our brains process information, as you might know, with a conscious and a subconscious. Everyone knows that, yeah? Okay. Our conscious mind deals with logical, rational thinking, while our subconscious mind deals with the emotions or the memories or sensory input. And intuition is the result of the subconscious mind processing information and sending signals to the conscious mind, which we experience as a feeling or a sense. So the subconscious mind can process much more information than our conscious mind. And so intuition can be a way of tapping into that vast pool of knowledge that's there and make better decisions or choices. So why don't we trust our intuition sometimes? I'll give you a couple of reasons. Here's a couple of reasons that I find. Uh, sometimes society values rational thinking, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Over emotions. You're so emotional, right? So we often discount our intuition as being too soft or unrealistic. 
or unscientific. We may have been taught to ignore our intuition and just rely solely on logic, especially in the academic, right, or professional settings. A fear and anxiety, you touched on that, can cloud our intuition, making it difficult to distinguish between the true intuition and just simply worry. So I wanna give us some distinctions about that, the differences. And we may be influenced by external factors. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Howie. Such as peer pressure, social norms, or culture expectations, which can override our intuition. So those are some of the things of why we, perhaps we don't trust it sometimes. Now, the benefits of trusting our intuition, despite all these challenges, can be, it helps you think quicker. I mean, not think, but you make um, confident decisions without overthinking. Do you second guess yourself sometimes? Yeah. So it kind of helps with that without second guessing. Intuition happens very fast. You don't have to think about it too long. Intuition can help you avoid bad situations or people by alerting you to flags. And a lot of times we talk ourselves out of those intuitions, don't we? <laughs> oh, he's got to be fine. Okay. Intuition can guide you towards your passion and your interests, uh, helping you make choices that align with your values and your purposes, okay? Intuition also, what I love about it is it can be a source of creativity and innovation by allowing you to think outside the box, which is what we do in Essence of Being, as you know, those of you who have experienced all of our play shops, we go outside the box, don't we? Or we go digging around in that subconscious with a stick, so, and seeing what's there and bring it up to a conscious level of shift. So, what I want to do is find out if you talk yourself out of it or not. So what do you think you have to have in order to, I don't know, not talk yourself out of it? It's a T word. Trust. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. So trust. How do I know if my intuition, if it's intuition or if it's fear that, I'm talking about because a lot of people come to me and they say, Virg, I don't know the difference. Sometimes I think it's my intuition. I think it's telling me to do one thing, but yet my brain and my fear come up or my limiting beliefs or my thoughts. And I, I talk myself out of it. So which is it? So hopefully tonight you're going to have a little more perspective on what it is. So for me, your intuition is always right. Just, so you know, it's always right. Just try that on for size, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the female aspect of our thinking, okay? Of our feeling part, the right brain. It's that right brain aspect, that emotional aspect of you. Because uh, we all have male and female parts of us. And the female part usually is that receiving part. It's also the part that is emotional, the right brain. And for me, it's always right if we could just listen and act on our intuition. But how many times have you had something go wrong and you thought, I knew it. I knew I should have done it. I knew I should have done this. I knew that that guy was going to propose to me that night. I mean, have you ever done that to yourself and go, I knew it. But if you don't follow your intuition, sometimes you beat yourself up too and you feel guilty. So doing that may not serve you either. So if you analyze a lot, and you try to make decisions a lot about things and you intellectualize it and you have this fear that comes up. So how do you know if it's intuition or fear? How do you discern that? Let me give you an example. So uh, for me, uh, if you're packing for a trip and you think, oh, my intuition says I need to bring this just in case. I've always asked myself, am I setting myself up for the just in case to happen? Because I'm thinking about, wonder if it does happen. I want to make sure I have it just in case. And I think for maybe some of us who do this, we may be creating it. You know, and I've always wondered about that. Am I creating the event so I'm right that I needed it just in case? Is that my intuition? And for me, it's, it's all about your gut. It really is a gut feeling in your head. The difference between your gut and your head. If you feel a tingle in your gut, which somebody said gut is your intuition, right? 
if you get a knowing and you feel it in your body and it tingles in your gut, then in my world, that trust of that feeling place is your intuition. Okay? Not a knowing place. Now, so if you know something, it could be all in your head, meaning you start talking yourself out of it and you start thinking about it. Well, I don't think I'm going to do this. I don't know if it's right. I'm going to bring up all the reasons why I shouldn't be doing this. And you go into that whole diatribe about what your left brain does, right? It starts taking over and says, I'm not supposed to do this. You give yourself all these reasons. It brings up all the things why you shouldn't do it or why you should do it, deciding logically. Because remember what I said in the beginning, intuition is really your ability to understand something immediately without a need for conscious reasoning. So let me give you another distinction between decision and choice, okay? How many of you make decisions? That's good. How many of you make choices? Okay. Well, what's the difference? Let me give you an example of that. What the difference is. So when you decide you're dividing and you, you kill off a side. So basically the origin of decide is you're killing off. You're killing off and dividing. You kill the ones you don't want and you let these go. And you think it through and it's very logical. For instance, I don't like vanilla ice cream. So I'm going to kill off the fact that I don't want that vanilla ice cream because I like, I, I'm going to, I don't like it. And I'm killing that off. So I'm going to choose chocolate ice cream. That's my decision. Now that requires thought. You have to remember, I don't like ice. I don't like vanilla ice cream. So you're thinking about it, right? Now, choice is just you feel like it. I want chocolate ice cream because I want it. Just because I want it. That's my choice. I, there's no reasoning in it. I didn't have to kill off something else in order to have the other. It's just what's, that's what I feel like doing. So just kind of notice how you make, do you make decisions or choices? And is there a difference for you and how your intuition plays into that? Okay. Intuition to me has no form. Do you trust the message? You trust the message and this always boils down to, do you trust yourself? Yeah. Okay. And do you trust your connection to whatever that is that you think you're getting a download from a knowing, okay, that kind of inner knowing. So not trusting is not following your intuition. Now, if I get a knowing or a nudge, it's a gut feeling. I feel a tingle and then I have a choice to act or not. And many times, probably you may have felt this right when you have gotten, I don't know, a nudge to do something. I should have called somebody. I needed to call that person and I didn't. When didn't I trust my intuition? So that's another distinction. Maybe you do trust your intuition, but you just don't act on it. So why not? Anybody want to share why not? Why don't you act on it sometimes? Because then logic takes over. And um, I, I did a mini TED talk on this and I called it, is your GPS turned on? And God gave me that as a, an acronym for God's probing sensor. Love it. And do you know that when you were talking about the proof, uh, the scientists in Harvard finally admitted that uh, this was only a short time ago, possibly 15 years ago, that there are 10 million brain cells in our gut. But what happens is as mm. soon as they don't have reasoning power like our brain does, right? So as soon as we think, maybe I shouldn't put my keys here, I might forget. Them. Oh, no, you you won't. You'll remember. And then you forget because your brain, you have split second. And I have to fight this all the time because I'm left and right brain pretty equally. So it's it does become a challenge, doesn't it, for some of us? 
Yes, thank you for sharing that, Rose. Absolutely. And they've also proven in quantum physics, 40,000 subconscious thoughts to one conscious thought, which is insane, right? So that you're right from intuition, which it keeps. So here's the other part about it. Sometimes we have this need. We want to keep ourselves safe. We want to make the right decision. So your intuition is never wrong. It's your spirit self, your inner knowing. If it's telling you not to do something, a good indicator will be that you will feel it in your gut. It, it literally is that mammalian brain in your gut, right? Rose? <laughs> You're going to feel it. So let me give you an example. Another example. Let's say that you uh, you want to take a job across country. Let's say that you got a call and you have your chosen dream job. It came in. It's However, it's in California. And you need to move all the way to California with your family. And let's say you live in Atlanta and you're going to need to move your family. So you're going to leave your friends. Although the job feeds your soul, it allows you truly to make a difference in the world. The cost of living, though, means you're going to make less money, perhaps. So what do you do? How do you decide? So first you may have, my suggestion is just be quiet, first of all, just be quiet. So let's focus on our breathing. Let's do that now. Okay, let's practice. So now let's just take a deep breath, everybody. Just take a deep breath. <sighs> breathing is good. You don't have to rush it. Emptying your mind of all thoughts clearly you follow your intuition by showing up on this call tonight didn't you yeah so kudos kudos for doing that and as you get still and you get centered you begin to think about that new job right so you could say it out loud is this new job the highest and good for all involved i always phrase it I pray for the highest good for all concerned. I choose the highest decision for all concerned. You can't go wrong doing that. So I always use those words. And I invite you to use those words or say this or something better. I choose to do this or something better. So this is just a technique where you just stop for a moment, you ask yourself the question, Take, you take long breath and say those words, okay? And feel it. And so if you feel that tingling sensation in your gut, that's your intuition telling you, go ahead, move. Go ahead and do it. So if your mind begins to list all the reasons why you shouldn't, leaving your friends and family, finding a place, getting all the data, what I suggest is that could be fear. And that's all in your head. Because if you think about it, fear rambles. And fear makes excuses. Now, for some of you, you may say, yeah, uh, fear also keeps us safe, right? And the fear is important. <laughs> the fear is important sometimes because it tell you, it's telling you something. But that's from a reptilian place. That's from your reptilian brain, the fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. And it, it does have an important part of our life. And uh, oftentimes, though, we get really stuck, though, in our freeze moment. And that's the lowest rung of fear of yet yeah, that reptilian brain. You either run from it or you're going to fight it or you're going to freeze and just not act. But why wouldn't you just, why freeze if you really want to do something? and you start talking yourself out of it from that prefrontal cortex, that fear, it's because you might make a mistake, right? Or it may not be the right decision. So it keeps you stuck and frozen. So something might happen. But what's happening, as long as you're participating, as long as you're stepping forward, as long as you're moving, as long as you're creating, as long as you're growing, you're making a difference and you're learning. Don't be afraid. So all if that's you, if that's been you in your past, where you've stayed stuck because you're not sure, take a step. What's the worst thing that can happen? You fall down. You learned how to get back up. What's the first? What you fail and you fail again and you fail until you win. So again, mistakes are part of that experience. 
part of the process. Okay. And one of my favorite things I say is trust and allow and don't ask how. Let's all say that, shall we? Trust and allow and don't ask how. So sometimes you just have to say, all right, I'm going to show trust. So I'm going to ask you something very quickly. And these are yes or no questions for you. Okay. So answer yes or no. Do I trust God? Or let me ask it this way. Do you trust God? What's yes or that? no. No. Do you trust the universe? Yes or no. Do you trust yourself? Yes or no. Can you trust yourself to make clear decisions? Yes or no. Okay. And this last one is not a yes or no. This is something I want you to feel into. It's a stream of consciousness. Just fill in the blank. Don't think about it. Just I want you to write it down or think about it. Just say whatever's first thing that comes to mind. When I trust myself, it feels. When I trust myself, it feels. And just fill in the blank. Okay. Now, there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just you kind of discovering some things. So if you answered no to any of those questions, now you have some information about perhaps why the fear gets in the way sometimes or the, the thoughts. You know, Maybe you're not thinking. Uh, maybe you're scared of the outcome or you're unsure of the unknown and you're afraid of the unknown because if you don't trust God or universe and you don't trust yourself and you don't trust yourself I mean where does that leave you not trusting and freezing or running away from because you're in the reptilian brain so it's so what we're going to do is we're going to move you into that that knowing self Okay, embracing that part of you that does know and does feel, and that is your intuition. Are you ready? Okay, so like I said in the, earlier, this is a little different. I normally don't do meditations on these things, but I felt like this would be a good one to do. So this is a meditation, and I'm going to put a beautiful video on the screen. And it's me talking in the recording, okay? And then we'll come back after this. And I want you to have something to write with afterwards because you're going to want to jot some things down and you're going to be getting some messages. So if you're driving, not a good, good time to do it. If you're not in a place where you could actually close your eyes and just relax, you can just allow yourself to put your feet on the floor and your hands on your knees or just relax your body. And uh, that would be a good place to get to. You could lay down if you want or sit, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, but like I said, we'll see what you, we'll see where you go and see what you find and discover. And then we'll write some things right after that. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. So just follow my voice and I'm going to start the recording and I'll see you on the other side here. Just listen to my voice. You're perfectly safe. Allow yourself just to let go of your body, let go of your thoughts. You're perfectly safe. And imagine a meadow. And in the distance is a large ancient tree. And this meadow feels so beautiful. You feel the sun on your face. You see this ancient tree way in the distance. You feel the flowers in the meadow. The grass on your feet. Walking toward the tree. You're going to the
the tree. Connect with it now. It's beautiful and old and sacred. Feel the bark. And all of a sudden, you see a door appear in the tree. Go ahead, open the door, and you're inside the tree trunk. Feel the energy of the tree and find yourself looking around, feeling safe and warm, and you see stairs, and you go down. Go down, walk down the stairs, circular staircase going down and down and down into the roots, feeling the roots getting longer and thinner until you are actually in the cells of the roots. and explore and move into the soil. Smell what it smells like, the belly of the mother, Mother Earth. Deeper. Deeper into Mother Earth. Safe and warm. And look around until you get to a place where you find an underground river. And this underground river is flowing. And see yourself on the banks of the river. Feel that beautiful river with your fingers and your toes. And it's so beautiful and it's flowing so easily you decide to get in and immerse yourself into the water, feeling it wash and refresh you. And you're feeling clean and cleansed and refreshed. Look around for an animal or an energy to travel at your side as you float down the river. It helps keep you safe. If you like, you can find a vehicle to carry you down the river, but you're flowing on the river with your animal or your energy and you feel yourself floating, floating, floating with ease in the water and let it carry you down deeper and deeper into Mother Earth. And feel yourself being gently washed ashore And you look around for the guardian of the underworld. Each of you may see this guardian in a different way, but once you spot him or her or it, tell the guardian, I am here. I am here to retrieve a soul part that I am ready to receive. And once you have received permission from the guardian, look around 
for a cave. And when you see it, go to it and enter into the cave, into the first chamber. This is the chamber of wounds. Here you will perceive the details of how you were wounded. You'll see or feel literally or symbolically your wounds. Observe them. Do not make a judgment on what comes forward. Explore this chamber with your power animal at your side. And once you have seen these pains, these wounds, request that the part that was lost through this pain and this wounding now come back to you. Do not judge it. You're safe. If this soul part cannot return with you at this time, request one that can. And feel that part that was lost leap into your outstretched arms and hold that part of you close. And now it's time with that part of you, that soul part of you, to now move into the next chamber. You leave the chamber of wounds and now you're in the chamber of promise. Here you will see a fireplace with a roaring fire. and a desk with paper on it. And written on that paper is the sole contract you made. Something you gave up in return for safety or love or something else you thought you couldn't have without making a sacrifice of part of yourself. So take a moment to explore this chamber with your animal and to read what is written on the paper. What was your contract? What did you sacrifice? What part of you? Now tear the paper up after you've read it and throw it into the fire. And go to the desk where there is a clean sheet of paper and a pen and rewrite the contract to something that will better serve you. Write a new contract. Now take this new contract with you and move on to the next chamber of the cave. This is the chamber of passion.
Look around here for the joy and excitement you have not been able to access. This may come to you in the form of objects, events, or something even more literal, your passion. And ask your passion if it is willing to return with you and accept each into your outstretched arms, all your passions. Bring them in. into the fourth and final chamber, the chamber of treasures. And with your power animal still at your side, look around for a gift, a gift that is to be brought back. This is your special gift to jump into your waiting arms so you may carry it back. Find yourself moving back through the chambers with your power animal, with your gift, with your passion, with your new contract. And your soul, the part that was missing. And begin the return up river and get back in the river. And you're floating back. Floating back. Travel back up on the river now, on the river bank, up through the soil. With your passion, your soul, your contract, and your gift, leave your power animal there, moving up, up, up the tree, up the tree, going up the stairs, going up, going up to the tree, up to the stairs, opening the door, back to the tree. And now you're back in the meadow. And now, take a deep breath, keep your eyes closed, come back into the room, and blow between your hands three times into your heart, and place your hands over your heart to seal it in. Seal it into your heart. And now, you're completely back, listening to my voice. Rub your feet on the floor, wiggle your toes, your hands on your knees, wiggle your fingers. And when you feel like it, you can open your eyes and jot down, write down what you saw, what you felt, your power animal, your gift, your soul contract, your passion.
So you can continue. Any gift you might have gotten? A new contract that you may have written for yourself? A part of you that's been missing? That soul part? Your passion? And maybe if you had a spirit animal that came with you. And this will continue to flow. You can't do it wrong. Hopefully, it's interesting how spirit moves. Uh, it's the recording stopped. <laughs> the recording stopped and I had to move it forward and it jumped. Uh, so that was interesting because that has never happened before. So, um, <laughs> There you go. I'm not sure what that was about. But if you have this book called Animal Speak, or if you know about this, it's a great book to, if you get animal totems that come to you, uh, spirit animals sometimes, they have messages. And this is a really great um, book that you can get online uh, from the Essence of Being site, actually, if you want, essenceofbeing.com. There's the books in there. But also... Um, if you didn't have a spirit animal, that's okay too. It could be all kinds of uh, guardians that come to with you and to you. This wasn't necessarily the meditation to find your spirit guide. That's a whole different one that we do. But this one is a truncated version of what we do in our live classes. Okay, when we're when I get my hands on you, but putting that. Writing a new soul contract, uh, perhaps uh, you first went into the chamber of wounds and that's finding the part of you that may have been lost that you brought back with you. The second one was the chamber of promise was where you had the contract that you ripped up, that you sacrificed a part of you, perhaps. Okay. Um, the third chamber was the chamber of passion finding your passion again. And of course, the treasure is the fourth chamber. And those are chambers of your heart, four chambers of the heart. So perhaps experiencing your inner knowing that way, sometimes things get in our way that we're not able to experience our passion. We're not, we're not able to uh, experience the gifts that are there for us. And oftentimes we have to go to that subconscious place or allowing ourselves to let go of any of the fears if we're not safe or and trusting our intuition, which is that that subconscious uh, place that we can go to. And if for some reason that the the uh, recording stopped and it kind of drumbled you a little bit i apologize for that but i guess spirit had something else in mind there so trust and allow and don't ask how so uh maybe when you come to our higher vibes class you get the whole thing <laughs> so, i don't know anyway but we're doing high vibes on the high seas uh cruise so that's in october so we'll be doing snippets uh throughout the week on that so uh whatever you wrote down or whatever you got, whatever you felt, um, please don't judge it. And it'll continue to flow through. Um, I wanted to give you some tools, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to, if there's anything that you have a burning share that you want to share, but I want to make sure we have a little bit left for me to give you some tools on how to discern uh, fear and intuition and what's your gut and what's your worry. Does anybody want to share anything about that experience? I'm big on shares, but unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time this evening. But anything? Bob? Sorry, my mute button was covered by an incoming text, but... Um, <laughs> There were two things that stuck out with me that what I wrote down first was the big one. 
And quite frankly, I think it's huge for me. But what came to me in the contract room was, I am a gift to the world. And that thought has just never crossed my mind. And then when it jumped ahead and it mentioned a spirit animal, I just went to a cat. Um, in the Harry Potter universe, my Patronus is a cat. And then when I thought about it, it's like, well, it kind of makes sense because cats always land on their feet and, you know, I'm still standing. So maybe there's something to that. So uh, she's pulling out the book. I am just real quick. But uh, the thing I want you to feel into, honey, when you said you are a gift. Yeah, I want you to really feel into that. Because that was a message from your intuition, your subconscious, the embracing that inner knowing of who you are. That's the real you, Bob. So welcome. Because I, I, what, what I know, you know, what I lost is me. There's yes. just no two ways about it. If, if I look at my entire history, what I've lost is me. And that's, that's the wound is I had to sacrifice myself in order to just get to, what is this, June 19th, 2024? Hey, it's the not getting it that takes the time. Right. You know, once you get it, then that's, that's when it starts. Yeah. 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 It's just, you were ready to hear it. That was, you were ready to let that sink in and come to you. The cat, by the way, is mystery, magic, and independence. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot about cats in here. So I would highly encourage you to, um, anybody with a cat totem, uh, it'd be beneficial to understand the magic and the balance of energies. And what you're finding out is the magic and the gift within you, honey. Yeah, there's a lot about cats in here. So, uh, wow. Okay, you never know what you're going to get. Right? <laughs> Let's see. You trusted your intuition, you guys, to show up tonight. And maybe you can verbalize it now. Maybe you can't. Maybe more will come because when we go into these states, that's what happens. It kind of keeps flowing. You might have dreams tonight. You might get more information and experience and just tr trust and allow and don't ask how and just allow it to come through for a gift for you tonight. And that that is my gift for you because we normally, like I said, don't do um, deep, uh, go into those kind of meditations in this, but it felt uh, important. So good job, whatever came for you, awesome. And if you choose to, you're, you're more than welcome if you're interested, you can email me anytime, burge at essenceofbeing.com. That's B-U-R-G-E at essenceofbeing.com. And you can say, hey, this is what I got, blah, 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 because I am interested. And maybe we can have a conversation about what happened, okay? Because I don't want to just leave you hanging out there. However, the, the tools that I want to leave you with tonight about really remembering who you are and embracing that inner knowing and the intuition, uh, you can remember, always say this or something better. If you're having an affirmation, you're thinking about something you're not sure about, just say, I choose to, um, I choose to have this or know this or something better. I, I pray for the highest good for all concerned. So if you're trying to make a decision or you're trying to have a choice about something's coming to you, about a meeting or a person or an experience or leaving or going, whatever this is, just say, I choose uh, and pray for the highest good for all concerned. And trust that gut part of you. So if it goes into your head and you start thinking, okay, Go back to the gut part and just stop and breathe and take that deep breath and ask those questions. A lot of people do muscle testing, kinesiology. Muscle testing is an awesome way. To tell, I mean, I buy houses through muscle testing. People think I'm crazy, but that's how much I believe in it because your body and your energy and your spirit is very true. 
and muscle testing you can do a lot of different ways. Uh, you, a lot of people do it themselves. They do it with their fingers like this, or they do it like this. They test, and and well, I do it like this on other people. You know, push down the arm. The other way, a, a lot of practitioners use muscle testing and kinesiology, uh, like naturopaths, chiropractors, those types of people. They'll sometimes, because your body's intelligent, and I go a little deeper into behavioral kinesiology. But one really great way to do it is. If you, uh, for yourself, as you stand with your, your feet uh, uh, right underneath of you, your hips are aligned and you keep your arms down and you close your eyes and you say, um, you have to phrase it a certain way. Don't ask it as a question. You have to phrase it as a statement saying, moving to California is the best and highest good for all concerned. You say it out loud, right? And then if your body leans forward, that's a yes. If your body leans backward, that's a no most of the time. You could, if, you're, if you have dual, if your poles are a little bit crossed, you can just ask, what's a yes and what's a no? Okay, you can say, what's a yes in my body is going forward? What's a no in my body is going backwards? Okay, a lot of people use pendulums as another way um, just to kind of play with. It's a tool that you can use. Um, but these tools of just making decisions, remember, if you're thinking about it, you're deciding something, you are engaging that prefrontal cortex. You're, you're killing off one to, in order to do another. So it may not be the actual gut, okay? So the gut, you feel that tingling in the gut, it's just because you feel like it. The thing that gets people tripped up is they feel it and then they go, but what if? and it goes back up here, okay? So trusting that gut part is the first and then acting on it. Because all of you are so wise. We're very wise, we're very wise. And to be able to just trust that gut feel, feeling in us is the piece that's really important because if you think about all the times in your life when you coulda, woulda, shoulda, and you knew, and you felt it, but you didn't act, okay? It's just, that's just the fear holding you back of the unknown and wanting to make sure you're safe. Making the right right decision because people have things that are right and wrong, good, bad, all that, okay? So just know that it's okay to make a mistake and all of you who've done Essence of Being, you know I'm all about them. Yay, mistakes, because we're learning, we're participating, we're growing, we're, okay? So, I invite you all just to um, make a mistake with me and uh, it doesn't have to be a mistake, but just don't be afraid to step into that, to whatever it is that uh, is guiding you. And so that is experiencing your inner knowing, in my opinion. And by the way, you might be saying, well, Burge, how could I continue to play with you on this realm? So if you go to essenceofbeing.com, there is the essence of abundance and the essence of relationships that's coming up in Atlanta in July, July 13th and 14th. In Fort Lauderdale, we're doing an essence of relationships July 27th. So we've changed it from the essence of being, Bob. Uh, now we're going to be doing essence of relationships the one day. So you can actually come to that one now because you haven't done that one. So essence of relationships is a one day and that's um, uh, July 27th. Okay, and all of these schedule of events that we have that are coming up, just go to essencebeing.com and look at the schedule of events that you can play with us. And of course, the cruise, High Vibes on the High Seas, it's October 21st to the 28th. Rose, you're coming, right, Rose? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, yeah, I need to call you tomorrow. Yes, you do. So, essenceofbeing.com slash cruise is all about that. And that's where you can play with us in these exotic lands and really experience high vibrational transformation on the water because the water is, it amplifies, okay? And we're very, we have a lot of fun and we're like crazy people, but you'll be with a lot of really fun, transformational people vibrating high and doing cool stuff, okay? It's very, very, very cool. And it'll be a chance of a lifetime. So I invite you to come play with us. We have spiritual journeys once a year and this is what we've chosen to do this year is that. And it's sailing out of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, so 
And Essence of Pain will be happening again. Uh, we're just postponing it until a little bit later. Yes, Bob? Don't forget the Conscious Leadership I'm Academy. Not. And a Conscious Leadership Academy, Bob can attest to that. And so can Ellie and Howie, yes. Because, and so Rose just joined too. And that it happens, every, that is something that is uh, keeps a community, global community together. We're building a global community of conscious leaders, empowering others to create the win-win world. So if this excited you or this connected with you in any way, if you go to essenceofbeing.com slash CLA, which means Conscious Leadership Academy, it'll tell you all about it. You can join us for free every Tuesday night. We have conscious topics and we do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but also we have so many things that you can play with and connect in with webinars and classes and workshops and connections and the global community because we've taught this on six continents. Okay. So uh, it's, uh, it's just a way to keep you integrated and connected because sometimes people read a book, they do a workshop, they have an experience, and then they go off into their life. And then it's like, huh, what, what, what am I? And we forget sometimes about who we are and we don't, you know, don't have reminders of people with us and supporting us. So it's a beautiful community to, to be a part of. So I invite you to do that as well. All right, any questions? Uh, any takeaways? I, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You. You're nice welcome. to see you, Bird. Nice to see you, Rose. And it's any really and I really appreciate you. Thank you. Come back next. The next one we're doing is the third. It's always the third Wednesday of every month. But we have these every week, by the way. If you're in, just come to CLA Tuesday nights, we have a whole hour every night that we do these kind of things. Um, but the next one is going to be when uh, October, a little. What month are we in? June, July. Good grief. Uh, what what is it? July seventeenth, and it's going to be on something. <laughs> You'll let us know. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what it is. I just it's just out of me. I think I went somewhere when you guys did, so I'm, I'll bring myself back. Thank okay. You. Love you all. Thank, Thank you much. for joining me. Appreciate Thank it you. so much. Take care. Thank you, Burge. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, sweetheart. You're a gift, Bob. Thank yes, you, I am. Good to see you.